five. In fact, it started at 2.45, didn't it? Because we had that boundary off the first ball. an absolutely unlikely uh, target for them it seems as if New Zealand will just bat out time and providing they don't lose any more wickets in the final half hour the match will finish at five o'clock half an hour ahead of schedule let's take a look at the two wickets that have fallen so far in the New Zealand second innings first man to go was John Wright century maker in the first innings got a little edge to that one from uh, Ian Botham through to Russell and John Wright gone for naught John Wright not especially happy with the decision took a long time before Steve Dunn the umpire ruled in the bowler's favor but it was the end of John Wright for naught. Blair Hartland, the second man to go, also to Ian Botham. LBW, hit in front. May have been a hint of it angling down the leg side, but that's bad, uh, bad luck there for uh, Blair Hartland after uh, not too many runs in uh, the second test. No runs in the uh, second test, only two runs in uh, the first innings here. He was looking to uh, get a good score and get a nod out to his name, but sadly for Blair Hartland, he couldn't do that. There has been one other moment of drama in the hour and ten minutes of the uh, New Zealand innings so far. And that's big uh, David Lawrence, the England fast bowler, making this approach to the wicket. And look at that leading knee. It just crumpled in that delivery stride. David Lawrence reeling in pain after that. They called for the stretcher. Absolutely writhing was uh, David Lawrence. Carried off on a stretcher with ice on his knee. We've had uh, an unofficial uh, medical report that he has a badly injured knee. But certainly it would appear as if David Lawrence is going to be unavailable for England for the World Cup. And that is uh, very hard luck indeed for uh, David Lawrence. After five o'clock, we'll be announcing the uh, UBIX MVP awards, both for this match and also for the series. We hopefully will be talking to both the captains, to some of the star players in this match, and we'll be summarising the, uh, uh, the entire test match. And we'll also, if uh, the New Zealand cricket board allows us, to, we'll have the names of the 14 players who will be representing New Zealand in the forthcoming World Cup. The World Cup starting with the uh, New Zealand match against Australia at Eden Park in Auckland on Saturday week. Back to the action now after drinks, and Dermot Reeve is bowling as we go back to uh, our commentators. Thank you, Peter. Yes, Dermot Reeve coming into the attack from the northern end, the R.A. Vance stand end, and he'll be bowl bowling to Martin Crow. Martin Crow on 11, Andrew Jones on 8 at the non-strikers end. And uh, he's on his way. Dermot Reeve, I suppose, a little disappointed, Jeffrey Boycott with the test. Hasn't really gone his way. No, it's still a learning process for him, but there's a good opportunity here for him to bowl at uh, batsmen of the quality of Martin Crow and Andrew Jones. He hasn't had much bowling either in the whole series. Had a bit of batting, batted very well at Christchurch and then did reasonably at Auckland. Not so well here. He's batted for a long time in that first innings, didn't he? And I, he looked very surprised when that ball hit his leg stump. He just shuffled across a shade. Uh, he just seemed to perhaps get out of line, lose his poise a little bit for that first ball. Yes, he made an elementary mistake. We've all done it. He just went across the crease rather than down the pitch towards the ball. But uh, his batting, I don't worry too much about. I think it's just a learning process. He's bowling. I'd like to see him bowl more in Test match cricket. Bad. Oh, there's a cheeky single, but it's uh, easy enough in the end. With England having great success with Philip de Freitas and Chris Lewis, and then Derek Pringle bowling so well for them in Auckland, um, Graham Gooch has not had to use Dermot Reeve. It's not a case as he hasn't wanted to. He's not had to. England have done quite well in the first two tests, and then Tufnell's bought a lot of overs. So here's an opportunity to give Dermot Reeve a few overs. Yeah, it's a good opportunity and uh, Dermot Reeve a real enthusiast he looks to be enjoying the tour oh we apologize for that uh, short break we just had a little problem and Dermot Reeves over comes to an end nothing much happened uh, New Zealand still 39 for two I think we've uh, fixed the little problem we had but Dermot Reeve into the bowling attack but earlier on well he was out bowled when he was batting this was the first ball he faced and it just snuck through and clipped the leg stump Yes, to be fair, it was a nice straight ball. Nothing better than a straight ball. The batsman <laughs> doesn't play properly, they're out. And that's what it was. 
Yes, he's a great man for calisthenics in the middle of the park, isn't he? Yes, he's trying to get his back loose for, for bowling. As I said before, he hasn't bowled very much, you see, and uh, you can bowl in the nets, bowl all you want in the nets. It's not the same as propelling that ball in the middle. So, Philip Tufnell coming in now from the southern end of the Basin Reserve Bowling Command Pro. And the shade over pitched. But, uh, yes, uh, the England side working very well. Some of the English sides we've had here have looked pretty sloppy, but, mind you, they have come from Australia and been fairly battered and bruised by the time they've arrived. Uh, and I think they're pretty keen to get home, Jeffrey. Well, I think it's a shame my two tours to New Zealand, it's a shame a lot of uh, English cricketers have come at the end of an Aussie tour or the end of somewhere else. And, and it's not that they don't try, they're just very, very tired, bruised and battered, as you say, been away from home four and a half months and they're ready for home, so you don't see them at the best. Yes, I thought you looked a bit tired and irritable. <laughs> I'm not now. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm all right. <laughs> Good stuff. When I came to Bato, I was a bit down and irritable. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you got out. <laughs> but you're always that way, even when you're at home, weren't you? When I got out, I wouldn't have spoken to anybody. The Queen of England, my mum, nobody. <laughs> I wanted to be on my own for a while. So Martin Crowe, all defence, not really uh, looking to get after the bowling. As one can imagine, only 20 minutes if we finish at five. And uh, that's the option that both sides have. So uh, I imagine that will be the story. cry of catch it but that's a familiar one out there from the close in fieldsman didn't look like it hit anything into the over 39 for two Noah's white ungy room modern elegant and stylish with an unequaled reputation for the finest in food and service it's a lovely day at the basin uh, and it looks like it'll be a lovely evening just had a word with uh, bob vance former chairman of the new zealand cricket council and of course the stand has been named after him here at the basin reserve and what a marvelous development of course you would have played on the basin when it was a in its old form, Jeffrey, when it sort of faced straight up and down in the old stand and uh, the old uh, deck chairs there that you needed an engineering degree to put together. Yeah, so when I played, a great gale force wind was blowing. I didn't see any of this nice sunshine. There's always problems with you, isn't it? <laughs> Dermot Reeve, not really quite on target. And... Uh, just got to get in a little closer to the off stump, I think, to make the batsman play. Good opportunity for 20 minutes here for him to have a bowl, but he's uh, got to try and get on target. A reasonable crowd's built up, and uh, they've enjoyed the day as it's worn on. Shame for New Zealand, the sniff of victory this morning, and then when they got those two wickets in a row and both of them went LBW, uh, they had the chance perhaps. But a very good punch of Alan Lamb, marvellous innings, and supported by Jack Russell. That put paid for the New Zealand hopes. And it looks like he's had enough. <laughs> and why not? So it's been a good test match, though, Geoffrey, hasn't it? Uh, fortunes have fluctuated. There's been some good batting and bowling. And New Zealand have had their chances. Well, I think it's been better than that. I mean, it's been a top-class test match. And here's a familiar-looking figure. I think that's Richard Reid, is it? Should be working. Maybe it's not. <laughs> quite sure he's so heavily disguised with dark glasses and hats and all down 
the league side. Not a great over from Dermot Reeve, but it's come to an end. 39 for two. so many dirty things that can happen to your car. It's good to know there's one sure, clean one. The complete car care system. From Kitten, the car care specialist. Well, there we are, the swings at the Basin Reserve, and uh, in that area, the new Cricket Academy should be going in in the next year or so, and that'll be a marvellous development for Cricket. Alex Stewart, a century in the first innings, a half century in the second, named as uh, the Bank of New Zealand Man of the Match. We'll be talking to Alex shortly. In the meantime, though, we're joined by the two captains, Graham Gooch and Martin Crowe with me. Thanks for coming down, guys. Graham Gooch, firstly, uh, are you happy enough to have uh, got out of the match the, the way things finished up? Yeah, it was going to be a tight game right to the end, and uh, we were happy the way we batted today. You know, 44 for three overnight. Um, if uh, Martin Seaman had got a couple of quick wickets, obviously they were right in it, and they were still well in it at lunch, but uh, the guys hung in, and obviously runs and time, it kept diminishing and uh, made it more difficult. So uh, we were pleased to fight back when they uh, you know, had the whip hand on us in the last few days. That's right, when you began your second innings, you were what, nearly 130 behind. Did you feel just a little bit of pressure at that stage? Yeah, I, I felt that uh, if we could have kept them down to a, a smaller lead and, and batted really well, we, we could put them under pressure at the end of the match. But uh, having got 120 lead, we had just had to bat for, what, four or five sessions and uh, they managed to do that. So that was great, uh, good fight back you know, from a difficult position. and. Uh, you know, we had had it our own way in the first two tests, but this one, the Martin team had it their way and they played really well and uh, we were under pressure, but I'm pleased that we, you know, held them off. And uh, Alan Lamb had a great night today. Yes, he's, he's played really well this series and I'm pleased for him because he had a disappointing tour, uh, a disappointing series against the West Indies, which is normally one of his teams, and he's come back well, so uh, there's still life in the old boy yet. All right, Graham, we might talk to you in a moment or two about one-day prospects and the like. Firstly, uh, David Lawrence, have you got any news that you can give us? No, he's gone to hospital. He's obviously going to be having an operation now. It looks like a serious knee problem, and uh, we just hope he pulls through OK. And uh, I, I can't give you much information on it, but uh, it's obviously a major operation he's going to have to have. So he won't be in your World Cup squad by the looks of things? No, I don't think so. All right, and it's very sad news indeed. What about your other injury problems with your fast bowlers, with Phil DeFratis and Chris Lewis? And things? You've got a uh, well, Chris Lewis, we hope it's all right. Uh, Phil DeFratis, we hope, will be all right in the next few days. So, um, you know, we've got to wait on one or two of them, but um, hopefully they're going to be OK. All right, uh, Graham, we'll come back in a moment. Now, Martin, uh, obviously must be delighted the way things have, have gone for you in this Test match. Not a win, but a pretty honourable uh, points victory, perhaps? Yeah, very much so, Peter. Yeah, good Test match for the, for the whole team. Um, you know, we hung in there the whole way today to try and, you know, get that breakthrough and, um, and get England out and, and, and possibly chase, you know, 100 odd. But um, really, Alan Lamb was the key today for, for England. And uh, he just looked so good in the end that it was, uh, um, you know, it, I thought we played very well. That uh, edge that he offered early. It was in the air for another couple of inches more, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was just one of those things where you, you dive and, and you come up with a ball, it feels good in the hand. So, uh, I thought I'd caught it, um, but Smithy had the best view of anyone, and uh, he was adamant that it wasn't. So that was the decision, uh, you know, made to bring Alan back. Did you think that you're in with a real winning chance when you had that first innings lead of 127? Oh, absolutely. Um, it was just a matter of bowling line and length, and, and uh, putting the ball in the right place, and obviously taking catches, the opportunities. Uh, and we, um, you know, we looked likely most of the time. I thought uh, the bowlers really stuck to their task well, but but we were up against some good players, and um, you know, they saw it out. On reflection, do you think uh, the dropping of those catches back on the first day had a big outcome, a big uh, say in the outcome of the match? Well, I suppose so. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's vital in any test match that you hold your chances. They don't come too often. Um, and you've got to, you know, a good player doesn't give you many chances, so you've got to take them. Um, but uh, I thought we played well throughout the whole game. Um, the effort was there, and we've improved out of sight from Christchurch. Right. Let's look to the one dayers and the World Cup. Uh, the team I met for New Zealand is going to be announced, we think, before 6 o'clock tonight. 
Uh, you're confident the team's going to do well after what's happened here over the last five days? Yeah, I think we're making good progress. Um, and uh, if we continue the progress that we've made in the last couple of weeks, then, uh, you know, I, I, I feel in our own country we've got some sort of show. All right, Graham, you're not going to be playing too much World Cup cricket in New Zealand, are you? You're in Australia for a lot of that time. No, we've got all our matches bar one in Australia. Um, we're going to announce our side later today. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough, but you know, there's eight matches. Uh, everyone's going to be important, and, you know, I think any side's going to have to win at least five or six. Um, five, probably six will be definite, I reckon, to get you through to the semi-final, and that's, I reckon, is going to be the aim of every side is to reach the semi-final. Then it's only one game and you can be in the final, so um, we're looking forward to it. I mean, I've played in two World Cup finals and lost both of them. And I hope to get to another one and I hope to win, but um, there's a lot of things that happen in one-day cricket. And you're all set for the, the next two one-days against New Zealand. Do you think they're a useful little warm-up exercise for that? Um, well, they're, they're one-day international, so they're important matches, but you know, we'll obviously want to give um, all our players a game, um, you know, because we want to get, get them into the atmosphere, and we're obviously trying to win the matches, and we want everyone to have a run out, so uh, we'll be in there with our, with our side, and we want to win, obviously. Right, Graham. And uh, Martin, what about this, this knee injury which uh, has been niggling you? A suggestion has been made that you might not be able to play maybe the matches against England or against uh, Zimbabwe next Monday. You're going to rest until the World Cup. Can you give us the latest information? Yeah, position? no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about the way it's gone the last three or four days. Um, haven't had a lot to do, but that's, that's the key is, is a bit of rest and uh, I've been doing a bit of exercise on it. So, in just building the muscles up again. So I'm pretty confident that uh, I'll be able to see the rest of the season out. Um, so you... you We'll be playing the last two one days against England and possibly Zimbabwe? Or? Absolutely, unless something stupid happens in the next couple of days. All right. Thanks very much for talking to us, uh, both of you. It's been a good series. Congratulations, Graham, for, for winning it. And uh, we look forward to Carisbrook and Lancaster Park. Thanks very much. Right. Graham Gooch and Martin Crow, the captains, will be uh, taking We'll take a short break now and return very shortly and have a word with the man of the match, Alex Stewart. Enza, the mark of quality from the New Zealand Apple and Pear Marketing Board, premier sponsor of the New Zealand Challenge. General Charles Payne defended in three successive years. The wealthy Bostonian had volunteered in the Civil War, proving an able and courageous leader. Qualities needed in managing the tough professional sailors, often from fishing schooners who crewed cup boats. His third defender, volunteer, like the others designed by Edward Burgess. The Scottish challenger was the cutter thistle, described as a big sailing brute. New York had been told 85 feet on the waterline. There was scandal when she was found to be somewhat over there. They raced in 1887, more air in the supporters' bag wipes than in the sails. The defender never tested. The Scots support boat was laden with whiskey, haggis, pipers. The challenge itself wasn't as well prepared. That's it. 
Tuesday, a question of domestics on a country practice. I haven't got the time to iron it. Sake, it's sake right. to me. Thanks, sis. Meet Tarzan, you housework. Sister, you're allowing yourself to be exploited. I thought we could swap for a week. I'll do all the men's work and you do all the women's. I suggest that we reverse this process and become the worst housekeepers of all time. Benjamin, what are you doing? I'm ironing. You're ironing nylon pantyhose? The boys are in for a surprise on a country practice. 7.30 Tuesday after sale of the century on one. Yes, it was a marvellous innings he played today, Alan Lamb. Right, we've got to Alex Stewart with us, and we'll be talking to him in just a moment. But uh, first, before we talk to uh, Alec, I've just been handed the New Zealand team for the Benson and Hedges World Cup starting Saturday week. So I'll read the team out. I feel like the chairman of the board here, but uh, here it is. The news hot off the press. Martin Crowe, captain. Chris Cairns. Mark Greatbatch. Chris Harris. Andrew Jones. Gavin Larson. Rod Latham. Danny Morrison. Deepak Patel. Ken Rutherford. Ian Smith. Murphy Sewer. Willie Watson, and only because his name starts with a W, he's named last, John Wright. So that's the side. Crow, Cairns, Great Batch, Harris, Jones, Larson, Latham, Morrison, Patel, Rutherford, Smith, Sewer, Watson, and Wright. Really uh, no surprises in that side. Mark Great Batch is brought back into the team, but from the 12 that were picked for this test match here, Blair Hartland, not surprisingly, is left out. Great Batch comes in to replace him, and Harris and Larson are added to the squad. So that's the squad of 14 for the World Cup on standby are Tony Blaine, Chris Pringle, Justin Vaughan, and Brian Young. So we'll uh, give you that team again later on in the show if you've just missed it there, and some more comment on it uh, as well before we finish here on One World of Sport at six. But now I'm joined by uh, the man of the match, uh, Alex Stewart. Congratulations on a uh, marvellous double, uh, a century and a 50. You've really uh, come into some, uh, some great form in this tour. You must be delighted with the way things have gone. Yeah, very happy the way uh, this series has gone. And in that, uh, shall we say, unaccustomed role as, as opener, do you see yourself as a, as a man who's going to open the batting for England for a while now? Um, well, we just have to wait and see. I say it's gone well this series. Um, anything can happen come next summer. Um, but I'll just be looking to get as many runs as I can if I do get selected again. Yeah, because this is a question I think I put to you in Christchurch after you'd scored the century there, but you haven't changed your mind or had any further thoughts on the subject during the series? No, not at all. So I'm just happy to play, and if it means opening, then I'm happy to carry on as, a, as an opener. All right. Uh, the second innings, uh, when you guys went out to, to, to start again, 127 behind, did you and Graham, just the whole team, in fact, feel under a bit of stress when you went out behind well, a bit of time to play? Yeah, obviously we had to try and get up level with them to start with. Um, then after that, anything else could happen. As it turned out, Alan Lamb played magnificent innings. Um, but to start with, we had to be a little bit careful, but at the same time, try and play a normal game. And thankfully, it worked out well, as I say, with Alan Lamb playing as well as he did. What did you uh, th think of the pitch conditions? Was it an easy pitch upon which to bat or not? Um, I mean, it wasn't a bad wicket. It was good to see that uh, test wickets finally turned. Um, it, was, it was a low and slow wicket, really. Hard work for the bowlers. But it wasn't a wicket, a wicket you could just go in and tie on a ball on straight away. Otherwise, good cricket wicket all round. What was your assessment of the New Zealand bowlers' performance in the second innings when England had their backs to the wall? I thought they did well. As I say, it, was, it wasn't easy to bowl them because of the lack of pace, but I thought they stuck at it very well indeed. All right, so you're obviously in good form as you go off into the one day. Now, a uh, bit of discussion in the England camp about uh, your role in the, in the World Cup and in one day matches. You're wicketkeeper in Auckland for the first one day. Do you think that scenario might occur again or not? Possibly. I think we'll have to wait for the selection to find out. You, you happy enough with the, with, with the gloves as well as opening the batting? Yeah, obviously I look for myself as a batsman who can keep wicket. Um, just got to keep practicing and uh, hopefully I do have the gloves on. It, it will go well for me. All right, Alec. Well, I know you're in, uh, you're in good nick as those one day as the World Cup comes along. You're going to look forward to batting on the uh, Aussie wickets. A bit more bounce over there perhaps. Then. That's right. Obviously a bit quicker and a bit bouncier, but hopefully uh, the side we pick will do a good job and hopefully win the World Cup. All right. Congratulations on a fine performance uh, in this match anyway and uh, good luck for the World Cup. Thanks very much. Thank you. Alex Stewart, century in the first innings and a half century in the second innings. Let's now take a look uh, once again at the wicket highlights, the wickets that have fallen today here at the Basin Reserve. Oh, it's out. It's been given out. LBW, Ian Botham gone. 
sweeping and a loud appeal. Umpire Aldridge says you're out. 254 for six England. Oh, he's out. He's going to be out. He is out. Reverse sweep and straight to Rod Latham at backward point. Alan Lamb getting a bit too clever perhaps, but he's done very, very well. A marvellous innings for 1 4 2 and trying to be, as I say, perhaps a little bit too smart. But fair enough, all credit to Alan Lamb. He saved the game for England. And my word, he's played some cracking shots. Turned down. Yes, he's gone. A very late decision made by Steve Dunn. I don't know whether he was waiting for John Wright to walk off or what it was, but he left it a long time before giving John Wright out, and both of them have struck. Right out for a duck. Four for one. Oh, that's very low, and Hartland's out. Hit him very low down, and Brian Aldridge quickly had the finger up. And Blair Hartland's innings is over. LBW to both of them for 19. That's 24 for two. Ah! Oh, that came back, and that's out. Andrew Jones is out. He padded up to a ball that came back. And umpire Steve Dunn said, that's out. So Andrew Jones gone. Dermot Reeve, the successful bowler, and New Zealand lose their third wicket. So the scoreboard's for today, England going from 171 for three overnight, declaring at 359 for seven, just on three o'clock. And that meant that New Zealand had a target of 233, an unlikely target, but here are the New Zealand second innings bowling figures. Three wickets for Deepak Patel, and three also for uh, Murphy Sewer, one for Chris Cairns. And New Zealand in their second innings, when stumps were drawn just on five o'clock, were 43 for the loss of three. Look at the final England bowling figures. Ian Botham had two for 23, and Dermot Reid finished with one for four. And now it's time to make the announcement of the Ubix Most Valuable Player Award, not just for this match, but also for the series. Firstly, here is our decision for the Ubix MVP for this particular match. John Wright wins the award, three points. Andrew Jones, a very close second, he gets two points. And who can deny Murphy Sewer? 20 not out when he batted, but five wickets in the match as well. He picks up the other point for third. Now the overall Ubix MVP for the series, John Wright with uh, two points in Christchurch. Three here is the series MVP. Chris Cairns just pipped at the post. He has four points, and Deepak Patel, who was the MVP in Christchurch, has three points. So it's John Wright, who's the Ubix MVP for the series. Here's Wright, the first runs of the morning. Here he goes, he's got his 50, it's a lovely shot too. Right again, lovely shot. This will be another four. Right pulls it away for a moment. Right goes for it again, and it gets it to him. It will get a magnificent strike from John Wright to bring out his 12th Test 100. And John Wright, the uh, Ubix MVP, is with us, both for the match and for the series. Congratulations, John. If we can just uh, pull back, we see Graham Harper with us as well. Graham's the regional manager for Ubix. Good to have you with us, Graham. You've got the two awards, and it's your pleasure to uh, make the award to, to, Graham, uh, to uh, John. Thanks very much, Peter. And John, congratulations, uh, Ubix MVP, for, for this match. Big 100 in the, in the first innings. Uh, not quite so good today, but uh, <laughs> that's it. Hero to zero, but uh, congratulations anyway on Thanks, being Graham. the... Uh, the uh, Ubix MVP winner for this match, uh, an excellent effort. So thank you. Good luck with that. Thanks very much. And of course, uh, you know, the series winner as well for the three-match series with England, and you've come out uh, on top there as well. So all I can say is uh, uh, well done. It's a pity that we didn't uh, go on and uh, win the series, but we've got uh, two more series in the one day, and good luck for the World Cup series coming up as well. Congratulations. Thanks, Graham, and thanks for your sponsorship. We appreciate it. Thank thanks you. very much, John. Cheers. Thank you. Well, John's got the nice uh, silverware there. Well done. And uh, I suppose you want to forget about today. You don't want to talk about today's knock at well, all. Well, <laughs> these weren't for today's efforts, were they? <laughs> it's that sort of game, isn't it? I, I suppose, um, yeah, I suppose it's one of the, well, it's the tough part of the game. You know, uh, 
you do well one day and then uh, not so good the other. But um, I, you know, looking back on it, uh, I, I'm pleased that, that I, I sort of, uh, you know, probably did my job uh, in, in some ways. Uh, it's disappointing to lose to, to England, but they're a very good side. They deserved their series win. They they, they outplayed us, and um, you know, I think they're probably, you know, the toughest and. and most organised English side that's come to this this country for a long time. They're a good side. You're right. It must have been a, a hell of a task, not just for you, but for the other New Zealand batsmen, uh, given the job you were this afternoon, come out for what an hour and a half or so at the end of a Test match when a draw's written all over it, isn't it? Well, uh, the, yeah, it's not too bad though, because you know you, you, you still have to you know be in the game and do your job. I I, I failed and, and and I didn't do my job. Um, it, it's a little difficult. It's not a great time to bat, but you know that's part of Test cricket. Uh, you know, you play five days and you, and you find on, on the last session you're putting your pads on and going out and trying to stay there. And, and that's part of the game, you know, really. Uh, and, and, and we had to do it. I mean, we saw what happened in Christchurch, so we had to get stuck in and, and Martin played very well and, and Blair played very well. Um, so, you know, uh, it's just part of the game. How satisfying was that uh, 100 you made on, on Friday and Saturday? I mean, uh, probably, you know, uh, very satisfying. Very, very, uh, yeah, I was really pleased with it. Um, it meant an awful lot to me because uh, I just wanted to do well and, and I, I wanted to get 100. Uh, I missed out in Christchurch and I, I got close. I, I thought I played well down there and, and didn't get there. Uh, people remember hundreds. Um, I certainly do. And uh, it meant an awful lot to me, that 100, definitely. I've got to ask you this question, Righty. Is this your last test? Oh, everyone's asking me that question. I know they are. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm not making any sort of decision about my playing future. Uh, at all because um, we've got the World Cup coming up. Um, I notice I've made the side, which I'm pleased about, um, and I've got to play well, you know. Uh, um, I've got to be sharp in the field and, and I want to contribute and, and um, you know, you've got to totally focus on on, uh, on, on that. I do and, and I made my mind up, you know, this, this season that I wanted to, to play and, uh, you know, get in the test team, do well in the tests and then get in the World Cup side and now I'm in it, I've got to do a job for the side. And so uh, I'm going to get stuck in and, and, and play well. Great. John Wright, thanks very much for talking to us. Congratulations once again on the Ubix Awards. We look forward to uh, you and Goodnick during the World Cup. Thanks, right. Peter. John Wright, the Ubix MVP both for this match and for the series. Now it's time for a news break. Off the field battle at the Basin Reserve this afternoon as England's cricketers object to a television cameraman. Alice and Leslie Turner have some spare unborn children and they're willing to give them away. Adoption is brought into the age of the test tube baby. Also tonight, some of you have cheaper home mortgages. More on those stories at six. One Network News and Homes. New Zealand's one complete news hour. Yes, it was official team photo day for the England side before the start of play here at the Basin Reserve this morning. Right now it's time to show you highlights of the day's play. England in their second innings were 171 for three when play began. Just 44 ahead with seven wickets in hand. Robin Smith and Alan Lamb together for England. We pick up the action now with Murphy Sewer bowling to Alan Lamb. 